All right, welcome back to Sovereign Literacy. It is the Chief Spiritual Luminary, Chief Omaka, and I'm here to teach you how to speak an original and organic language, the language that we have been deprived of. And so I'm going to come with the knowledge on recoding and decoding words, simple words that you have not really taken a look at because you've been taught in schools and you've been taught in institutions, you've been taught in college, you've been taught at your jobs, you've been taught by your parents, you've been taught by society how to speak, what to say, they're giving you a language. And because we don't have our own dialect anymore, which, which we once did, we now have to speak a different tongue. It's not an indigenous tongue. It's not a native tongue, a tongue to our native land anymore because only the carbon and copper people who have a native land, which is called planet Earth, we don't have a language. So our language is different. We have a way of speaking and our way of speaking is broad. We have so many different languages, but we as the carbon and copper people of America, we don't have our own language. We speak a European language. And if you're going to heal your DNA, the memorization, if you're going to heal your mind, if you're going to be brought back into remembrance, remembering yourself, you got to be able to speak a sovereign language, a language that's more organic and a language that's more indigenous to the planet in which we live. Because what they did with the language was they took in us, they gave us the language, and they gave us 15 different meanings up to the word that we're saying. So they put so many filters in the way of the actual meaning to what we're speaking. So now someone like me have to come along and teach those of you who will be belonging to me and my tribe and my community of people who will belong to God body. That's our tribe, the sovereign warriors. If you feel like this is where you belong, speaking an organic language that is indigenous to the planet, then these are the words that we're going to be learning. Now, these words I'm teaching you are just words that I've seen deep into. Again, this is sovereign literacy, and I'm basically doing for you a bunch of different words. And this class is going to go on until we've gotten a language in which we speak totally different from the way we speak now. And I'm talking about even replacing the words that I'm using right now. The words that I'm even spitting out of my mouth right now. Even replacing these words with more phonetical sounding words. That's why sound therapy is something that we need to learn. Sound therapy isn't just something we need to hear. Sound therapy is something that we need to also eat. Because it's what we, we say things, we're actually eating the words we say. That's why they always, that's why they got a saying called, um, I'm going to make you eat those words. Right. We have to eat our words. We are eating our words. So we have to make sure that the words we speak is nourishing to our bodies, to our minds, to our DNA. So the words that we speak have to be words that we can eat. Don't say nothing. Your mama always say, don't say nothing you don't mean, right? Well, what does she mean by that? Don't say nothing you don't mean. That means if it's not from a real place, don't speak it. And the words we're speaking is not from a real place. So when we say things, we're going to be saying things that we actually mean because the words we speak now are not what we actually mean because these words are different different so we got to get back to the first language which is an organic language we have to get back to the organic language the original way so sovereign literacy is helping us understand how we get back there okay let us begin Sovereign, sovereign Literacy 101. We're going to start with the word evil. If you look at this word evil, you can see three words in this word evil. You see the word 
in this word, you see three words. You see the word live going this way. And you see also the word, if I put an E right here and cross out that word, we see the word vow. Now, also what we see in the word is lie. That's a fourth word that I just came up with, that I just saw. So we got the word lie in there. So we're going to look at the word evil, though, and we're going to give it a new meaning. We're going to give it the meaning. We're going to give it this meaning. Bow. Because when you think of something evil, you're thinking of someone who is sick minded. You're thinking of someone who is sick. And so when you think of the word vow, which is actually something that sits in the bottom of your stomach, stomach vow, you understand? When we think of the word vow, we're thinking of the word something or someone who is very sick, a sick individual, a mentally disturbed, demented individual, a mentally disturbed demented sadistic individual and so when we look at the word vile we're looking at someone who is very sadistic very demented very disturbed so when you think of the word evil look at the word vile and now we're attaching the word vile to someone when we say you're evil we can even say you're evil you're evil because you are a sick demented disturbed sadistic individual and so evil or vow is the word or evil we don't we can use the word evil but evil has gotten so watered down evil has gotten so watered down that we we give the word evil to people like hitler people like um marilyn uh, manson charles manson we give the word evil to these type of people but these type of people are what we look at as evil but someone who is Evil is not a Charles Manson or a Hell Hitler. Someone who is evil is someone who is just sick. Someone who is evil is really vile. They're sick. So when we look at someone who is sick or vile, we're actually looking at someone that may not be a Hitler, may not be a Charles Manson, but they can just be someone who has sick thoughts, sick ways, sick behaviors. So that person is a vile person, not an evil person, but a vile person. So anyone we see as evil, we see them as vile. But when we see them as vile, we also can see them as evil too. But we first got to see them as sick and disturbed and vile and need help. Let's look at the word religion. We want to use the word religion, right? When we think of religion, people get scared about this word because people think as soon as you say religion, you're talking Catholic, you're talking um, some type of indoctrination, religion, right? But religion is just something that you, you, you gave your allegiance to. This is something you gave allegiance to. You pledge allegiance. This is what legion is. Legion is in the word religion. So this is something you vowed a legion to. But we as copper and carbon people, we as I call our race, the indigenous race, we as indigenous beings, you understand, this is how we get to heal. We got to heal because we got to, the order to heal, the way to heal, to live holistically, you have to speak holistically. You have to use words that are whole. Not words that are 15 different meanings. That's not a whole word. That's a divided word. These are divided words. So when we talk about living holistically, we're talking about living whole again, getting back to a whole space of wholeness within ourselves. So when we talk about being holistic, we got to speak holistic and we got to also believe holistic. Our words have to be holistic, whole, one. So holistic means to be one, to be one. So we got to get back to being one, holistic. One, right? So when we talk about religion, th the question I want to ask is, what are we pledging our allegiance to? Who are we giving our allegiance to? And so when we think of the word religion, we see legion, but we as indigenous, as an indigenous race, and as copper and carbon people on this planet, 
the indigenous people of this planet. We heal. We live holistically. When we speak organically and sovereign and return to a sovereign language. When we see we don't speak the alphabetical language, that the alphabets we don't use, we speak sovereign. We don't speak alphabetics. We we don't speak the alphabetics. That's a Greek Roman language. Alpha. That's a Greek language. We speak indigenous. We speak, we are organic and indigenous beings, so we must speak a original language. We must speak a language that is independent of the Roman Greek alphabet. So we speak sovereign. This is how you're going to heal your mind and remember who you are, getting back to the truth. So when they ask you, what is your religion? You say, I don't know a religion. All I know is nature. I only know nature. Nature is your religion. Nature is your allegiance. You pledge allegiance to nature. So when they say, oh, what do you practice? You say, I practice nature. When they say, what do you live? How do you, what do you, what, what do you believe in? I believe in nature. Nature is my religion. Nature is my not, my, not my religion, but my allegiance. Nature is my allegiance. When they ask you that, you say, oh. When they ask you, what's your religion? Say, I don't have a religion. I have an allegiance. My allegiance is nature. That's what we go to. We don't say religion. We say allegiance or we say nature. But you pledge allegiance to nature. Nature is what you practice not religion. Let's look at the word entertainment. Now the word entertainment, you got to understand this is deep. I could break this down so many ways, but let me do it real quick for you once. When we talk about entertainment, we're talking about the things that we allow to first enter us. And then once that thing enter us, what does it do? It contains our what? Our mind. It contains our mental. So when we talk about entertainment, what are you allowing to enter, contain, mental? Enter, containment. So whatever is entering you is actually containing you. Containing your mind. It is containing you in your mind. So we got to look at the word entertainment a little bit differently and think, well, what's entertaining me? What's entertaining me? So now this is another word that we got to give new meaning to. So when we say entertainment, we look at it like this. Entertainment. Now, what is tainting you? Because you can be tainted by something good. You can be tainted by something good. You can be tainted by something bad. I can allow the good. See, people, good. Not only does bad things get in you to taint you, but good things can taint your, alter your. Because to taint you is to basically sway and alter your thinking or alter what you believe or alter who you are. So when we talk about taint, we're talking about what's really shifting or altering the way you think. Because that's what it means, mental. What is inner? What is inner? What's inner? Taintment. So we got to look at the word taint and say, is this tainting me in a good way or tainting me in a bad way? Entertainment. So we take entertainment and call it inner or call it inner taintment. Because we have to be careful what is entertaining us. Entertaining us. Let's take this word well and give it new meaning. When you hear the word wealth, you think prosperity, you think fame, you think fortune, you think riches, you think money, you think financial security, you think generational wealth. You think in a European way. You think in a European way, but what they did was they gave you the word wealth and made you look at it like this, when actually the word you should be looking at is wealth. How well are you? How well is your thinking? How well is your family? How well off are you? How well are you? Are you truly well? So when we talk about wealth, we don't want this. We're chasing this. We're chasing wealth. We're not chasing that. We should be chasing this because chasing this is going to make you sick. 
because it's a never ending struggle to get it. Rich men already can't get enough of getting more riches. They want more riches. But when you get wealth, you get what? Contentment. When you get wealth, you get content with where you are. When you get well, you understand? Nobody at their deathbed ever said, yo, let me get all my money out the bank and bury me with it. No. They always ask for another chance at their health. So if you're living well, you're living a wealthy life. Okay? Let's look at the word we are on what? So let's look at this other word, amenities. The word amenities is a word where we have to be like, oh, how many, what, what comes with, you go get a hotel and you look at what are the amenities? Amenities, think of the word of many, amenities. You're talking about how many of the things come with what you're getting. Well, that's also a sick way of thinking too. Because you're thinking about amenities. You're thinking about what you can get for your dollar or for the little bit that you're paying for, whatever. You're thinking about what comes with what you're asking for. When you go book a hotel or you go buy a home and you ask, what are the amenities? Because everybody want to know what they can get. But again, when you become content, with your being you become content with what is and so we don't want to look at the amenities we want to look at the present state of what is where am i at in my immunity if you have balance and harmony in your immunity you're okay with situations you're okay with where you go you know when i was traveling to the philippines and dominica and costa rica I, that's the last thing I checked for was the amenities because I knew exactly where I was going. I was going for, I was going somewhere where it was better for my immunity, and I wasn't looking at the TV and the toilet and the and and, and all of the beauty or the luxuries that I get to get with that. I knew I was going somewhere for my immunity and not for the amenities. See, when you go somewhere for your amenities, for the amenities, you forget your immunity. So people go get hotels with all the nice luxury amenities and they go drink and they go sit by the pool they, they they go swim in chemical filled water they go drink alcohol that's filled with all kind of sugar that's not good for their body and i'm not here to judge people that drink you understand because i have me some or two you understand but we forget our immunity we forget what we're there for are we there for wealth or are we there for wealth you understand so we got to change the way we see things when you look at amenities you should be saying oh when you go somewhere don't look for the amenities Look for, look within. Don't look without. For amenities, look within at immunity. Let's look at the next word. This cover. This word is overblown because you got people like Christopher Columbus and you got all these other European people that ran out and been told that they discovered America or they discovered new land or they discovered hold on you cannot discover anything that's already there you cannot discover nothing you can only uncover because your eyes were not pre privy to it so we take the word discover and we call it uncover so when we look at when we do a soul searching when we go on these spiritual journeys and searching of our soul we don't discover nothing. I discovered my soul. I, I found my soul. I, I was on the soul. I want, I, I'm going to discover my, my spiritual, my soul, my connection to my, my spirit. I'm going to discover who I am. No, you're not going to discover nothing. Actually, what you're going to do is you're going to peel the layers off and take the layers off of you that's been covered on top of you. So we have to take the word discovery and give the word uncover. Because that's what it truly means. That's getting back to the raw form an organic way of looking at things you are already possessed with everything you need you are already possessed with all of the things that you desire you are already possessed why number one because you're a sovereign indigenous being to the planet everything you need is already within you because if you see yourself sovereign natural indigenous and holistic nice or 
natural, indigenous, holistic, and sovereign. If you see yourself nice, <clears throat> natural, indigenous, holistic, and sovereign, you're going to understand that you already have everything you need. You have everything within you. So you don't need to go and discover a dog a dog on thing. You just need to uncover everything that's been pounded and beaten on top of you. It's a uncovering, not a discovering. So let us uncover what's already laid within us, that is already buried within us. Let us uncover the truth. See, the truth is always buried, put on top of things, laid on top of layers on top of layers. We don't want to uncover, we don't want to discover nothing. We really want to uncover, we want to start peeling off the layers of religion, of education, the European education, of the European way of society, marriage, of the European way of finances. We want to discover, we want to uncover the truth, okay? And not discover. Next, we're going to do, we're going to do human beings. Now, we're not human beings. And I'm going to tell you this right now. We are really just beings. We're not human beings, we're beings. But they want to give us the name human. And I understand human, colored man, human. So they want to give us the word human beings. But the truth of the matter is this. Once you come back to a sovereign way, a natural way of thinking and living and living holistically, whole, one with yourself, you don't become a human being. You are God body. You're not a human being, you are a God body. So I don't even look at myself as human being anymore. Why? Because I see myself as God body. I'm God body. I live in touch and in tune with my divine purpose. I live in, in touch. And listen to me. Your purpose is not something you got to go and find. Just you live in natural, indigenous, holistic, and sovereign. You are living your purpose naturally. You're naturally living what you were designed to live. And that's what makes you God. That's what makes you God when you live the natural way, the way you were designed to live, natural, indigenous to this planet, being respectful of the planet, living in harmony with the planet, respecting the planet, living holistic, eating the food that your body deserves and needs, eating the way you're supposed to eat, eating natural the way you're supposed to eat. And when you are living sovereign, you are living the organic way, the independent way of a system because you're saying, I don't need a subset or a system to tell me how to live. Naturally, I know already how to live. If you were born on an island with just you and your mama, if you were just born on an island with you and your mama, and you had nothing but nature around you, water, food, <clears throat> natural resources, you would not know a system and how to survive. Because you would see what you, you can eat around you. You would see what you can use to survive around you. You would naturally come to this understanding by looking at your environment. And so when they made you a human being, they separated you from God. They separated you from God making you a human being. I'm not a human being. I'm a God body. So do not call me a human being because then you you you, you dumb me down. You lower me down to this realm. And I'm not. I'm ascended. I live in an ascend, ascended way. And my thinking is, is that of ascension. Always elevating and evolving. My consciousness is always expanding. Elevating, evolving, and expanding. I'm going to make those three principles up for you later on. Elevating, evolving, and expanding is how we live the God body way. So look at God body and understand what God means. The great harmonious alignment I'm not going to write it all the way out. I'm just going to abbreviate of the divine. The great harmonious alignment of the divine. When you are living natural, indigenous, holistic, and sovereign, you are living as the great harmonious. You're living. This is what makes us great. We become great, supreme, supernatural, super powerful, supreme beings. When we are living harmoniously in alignment with our divinity, that's what makes us great. We're great when we're living in alignment and harmonious 
alignment with our divinity. How do we live in harmonious alignment with our divinity? When you live natural, when you live nice. Natural, indigenous, holistic, and sovereign. That's how you live in harmonious alignment with your divinity. Okay? Now, I am going to complete my lesson for today right here. I can keep going. I got the energy to. But I'd rather stop now because I got more to go. And I just want to keep you here for the short little time that I have you here to just give you these lessons today. So next time we come back, we're going to do more. We're going to keep revealing and unveiling more of the sovereign literacy. So stay with me. Stay tuned. Be in touch. Let me know how you um, are taking all of this so you can gain more understanding, deeper understanding. And let's get back to an organic way of speaking, recoding and decoding our organic language. Let's get back to a natural way. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Okay? Listen, I love you. I love me. I love us. Be well. Be loving. Be light. Be loving. And always remember to live from the soul. And don't forget, go to GoFundMe forward slash Soul Center so you can donate to the mission that we're getting ready to do. We're getting ready to go back to a natural way of living. I'm taking us back to the sovereign way. And I mean that. I mean that, but I need your help to help me do it. Because I got the way, I got the path, I got the knowledge, I got the teaching, and I got the understanding. So your help definitely is needed. So go to GoFundMe forward slash Soul, S-O-H-L Center, Soul Center. And let me know, you know what I'm saying, that you gave so that I can, you know, send you something. You dig what I'm saying? Be well, beloved. Peace.